Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom, some of you might know me as Bowl of Salmon on Instagram. Today we're doing a different style of video. Instead of talking about a watch in detail, I will be showing you how to swap out the bracelet on your watch and I'll be showing you some of my favorite strap options for the Amiga Speedmaster Professional. We all know that the Speedmaster is an absolute strap monster and in this video I'll go over 5 straps that will make you feel like you are wearing a new watch every single time. Ranging from a dressed up look to a vintage feel or dressing it down a bit for a more adventurous vibe. Now I remember my first bracelet change. I might have even stabbed myself with the spring bar tool. So maybe I'm not the best example to show you how to get the bracelet on or off, but if anything it shows that even if a clumsy fish like me can do it, you can too. The first combination that I want to show you is actually one of my more recent finds. It's a leather strap from a French brand named Joseph Pony. This strap has quickly become one of my all-time favorites because it gives your Speedmaster this amazing vintage feel. It's available in different colors. It's a super light perforated strap with a great taper on it and it really feels really smooth on the skin. If you want to go for a more classic, more dressy look, a leather strap can do just that. There are a lot of leather options available depending on your mood or taste. A good strap maker like Deluxe will offer leather straps in different lengths to fit any wrist. And another handy feature about these is that they come with a quick release system so it makes changing straps a breeze. There's no need for tools and there's no need to worry about scratching your lugs. Stepping away from leather into another material Vulcanized rubber or FKM rubber straps are made to be both strong and flexible. It's no secret that in summer I am a big fan of tropical straps because you can get them wet or when you get them dirty you can just rinse them off. Now big disclaimer, these straps may be waterproof, your Speedmaster is not. But still, my favorite of any tropic straps I have tried thus far are these ones from Joseph Bonney and I really like the look of them on a Speedy. These straps are super soft and flexible, they have a nice taper on them and they don't attract dust easy. And they probably will serve the dive watches in your collection just as well. Another summer proof option are these sailcloth straps from Artem. These Artem sailcloth straps have always been a part of my go-to strap options. It's a really durable and solid material, yet it feels great on the wrist and they wear in really quickly. These may not be the most cheap options in this video, but I can totally vouch for them. I spent full summers with them and they still look as good as on day one. At the time of this video, Artem offers these in both blue and black. You can choose a normal buckle or go for a deployant clasp. Recently, they also added these Omega style loopless options to the collection. Of course, NATO straps can't be missing from this list. They will give your Speedmaster this tool watch feel and they are available in every possible color. And maybe a NATO strap is also the safest option for your watch. NATO straps have their origin in military use. With double pass NATOs there are two layers of fabric between the watch and your wrist. There are two pieces of hardware that keep your watch from sliding around and if one of your spring bars fail this will also prevent your watch from dropping to the ground. There are so many types of NATO straps available in different materials that I can probably do a full video about them. But my favorite ones are these tubular style NATO straps because they provide the ideal balance between comfort and stiffness on the wrist so the watch head doesn't feel too heavy. Okay, so you always dreamt of that Ed White Speedmaster, but just like me you settled with the 1861 Speedmaster Hesselite. Well, there is still hope for you because there are some really good aftermarket bracelet options available too. The one I have here is the Forstner Flatling Bracelet. It's a reinterpretation of the famous Amiga 1039 bracelet. I have the polished version with the brushed center links, but a fully brushed one is available too. The bracelet is a lot lighter than my original one. It has a nice taper and best of all, it has no fewer than 6 micro adjustments on the clasp. So these are my favorite strap options for the Speedmaster. I'm sure I missed a few good options, so do let me know what your favorites are. I'll put the links to all this stuff in the description below. If you want to see me mess around changing bracelets, stick around. If not, you would do me a big favor hitting that subscribe and like button at this point. Okay, tools. Get a good spring bar tool. I prefer using this larger burgeon tool, they provide more control. One end is a forky tip, 
and the other end as a solid point. I almost always carry one of these smaller travel versions with me too. There are also tweezers available, they can be easier to get the bracelet off, but I always refer to using a simple spring bar tool for putting the bracelet back on. I guess my eye-hand coordination is a bit out of whack, but I suppose that most people will find these tweezers more easy to use. These are some alternative tweezers that I found on Amazon, where you can regulate the distance a bit more between the opening and closing position. Same same, but different. Okay, first with the tweezers. You put them at the end of the spring bars, you apply equal pressure, and at the same time, you pull the bracelet out from between the lugs. Okay, with the classic spring bar tool, you use the fork tip to pull the spring back a little. You put some pressure on the bracelet with your thumb or finger, so it doesn't snap back into place, and you repeat the same thing on the other end. If you are squeamish about scratches, you can always tape off the lugs. Now, I'm usually too lazy or in a hurry to do this. Now, to get the bracelet back on, just use the pointy tip to push the spring bar back into place while using my thumb to push down on the bracelet. Make sure you hear them click into place to avoid accidents. Depending on the tolerances and the stiffness of the spring bars, this might be more difficult the first time. The most important rule to remember is that if you feel that you are forcing it, you probably are doing it wrong. You don't need to apply a lot of force. If you change up straps a lot, and if your spring bars start to feel loose, it might be a good idea to replace them. I hope this was at least useful to some. If you have any questions, come find me on Instagram or let me know down below in the comments. Subscribing to the channel and liking this video really helps to support the channel and my mood. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.